Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for folks that are here in the room. Thank you so much for hanging in with us. So this is this is a panel that was rescheduled from this afternoon due to, to some of the some of the issues that happened. And we wish the best for the cameraman as well. So it was heartbreaking to watch, but um, but we wish him was uh, good health. So so um. So as Roger had explained, uh, the goal of this panel is to, is to explore in the initial discussions why the folks on this panel got involved in, in technology to begin with. So, um, so we're going to start off with that as, as, as a leading question, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what your role is at the companies, and if you can go ahead and express to the audience um, what you do for the company and give them a little background about the company, and then we'll go from there. I have some other seed questions that I received some, for some, based on some conversations I had from the audience. So, so with that, I think I'll start here on, on the left side here. Do you have the my microphone? All right. So Hello? there you go. Test, test, test. I think, test, I, test, test. I think you're live. So why, why don't you go ahead and address the audience and for two, two questions. The first question is why you got involved in technology to begin with, and then number two, your company, your background, and your role in the company. Let's start there. Sure. So my name is Victoria Lifschitz. I'm a founder and CEO of a company called QBell. Um, this is a very special event for us. We're a technology startup, and this is in some sense our coming out party, if you will. Uh, so we're fairly recently out of stealth, um, and uh, I'll be uh, uh, enjoying the rest of the conference and giving DevOps keynote tomorrow. I don't think this works well, does it? I can hear you. Um, so how I got into technology, I was um, raised to be a mathematician. I entered college to be um, uh, study applied, applied mathematics. Um, and then uh, I fairly, uh, fairly quickly discovered that I actually liked algorithms and discrete mathematics and programming more. This is better? Oh, I think that's a lot better. Um, so uh, at some point in time, my family immigrated to the United States about 25 years ago or so. Um, I switched mathematics to computer science and uh, then went to work for, uh, for Ford. Um, spent about 10 years in automotive industry. Uh, I wrote first um, crash simulation codes for uh, for um, um, for for Ford back in back in early early 90s. So I started as a HPC engineer. Um, uh, then started working with programming, distributed computing, Java. Joined Sun in uh, uh, 1997. Spent about 10 years with Sun Microsystems in a variety of different roles. I worked in the field engineering. I worked in the labs. I worked in product development. I uh, was very lucky to be able to see all phases of the product creation. And then uh, uh, at some point in time, um, I uh, had the entrepreneurial bug. I left Sun in 2006 and started uh, building companies. Uh, Cubell is a second company for me. Thank you. I'm Ann Hungate, and I'm a senior director of software quality at DirecTV. I have, uh, in that role, I'm in charge of all of the back office core system testing and all of our capability uplifts, so innovation and process and improvements that we're bringing to help uh, drive better software quality and a better experience for all of our customers. I got into technology because for my 12th birthday, I got a Commodore VIC-20. And nice. it was such a great gift. I, sat there and figured out how to program my own games and occupied myself for hours. Uh, you know, it wasn't a cool thing to do, but it was a lot of fun. Um, when I went to college, I was studying marketing. Uh, and I found marketing easy and obvious and got into applied mathematics, statistics, analytics and put the two together and found that it was really powerful when you looked at marketing trends mathematically. So what I'm focusing right now in technology and where I really would like to see women have a stronger impact on technology is in understanding the whole customer experience and then the analytics that support that. So let's use facts and data coupled with intuition to drive a better experience for all of our customers. A, a little tangent on DevOps. I think one of the challenges for DevOps really gaining momentum is its emphasis on dev and ops and not on customer, profitability, um, margin, growth, the so what, the business so what. So that's where I think women can add a lot of value in technology. 
Hi, I'm Esmeralda Swartz, and I am CMO of Metrotech. I um, actually was recently acquired by Ericsson, so I now am responsible for uh, products and marketing for uh, both our uh, billing as a service offering as well as our uh, enterprise uh, billing platform. Um, I, gosh, how did I get into technology? I don't think there was ever anything I uh, wanted to do more than being in high tech. Uh, it started off uh, being an intern at uh, what was formerly Lotus, now part of IBM, in the uh, Lotus Notes group. And uh, from there, I actually became an analyst uh, covering networking technologies. And I was recruited uh, by the, the uh, CEO of a then startup uh, to run marketing for uh, pre-IPO company, uh, did the journey from uh, pre-IPO through uh, public offering, um, ended up uh, co-founding two software companies, and then joined uh, Metrotech about four years ago, and um, just about to uh, begin the journey with Ericsson. Uh, in an interesting twist, uh, Ericsson is actually one of the largest uh, software companies in the world, and um, one of the major reasons that they uh, acquired our company was that they wanted to get into the enterprise space into Internet of Things and cloud. Um, so it's a really uh, hot market right now and uh, really excited to be here. Hi, I'm Evelyn D'Souza. I'm a compliance and data privacy leader at Cisco Systems. My role is very much focused on developing industry blueprints and solutions for emerging compliance and data privacy issues. The way that I got into technology is somewhat surprising. I'm probably your first musician turned compliance data privacy specialist. Um, 15 years ago, I was on vacation over here and went to a career expo to see what Silicon Valley was all about. Somehow took a bet with a friend saying that I could get someone to sponsor an H1 visa for me and then had to make it work and well had done. to work very, very hard. And so then I thought I would work in high tech just for a little bit. I got into a high tech security company, um, started on you know, doing some tech training, writing out, you know, sort of almost like technical writing. And 14 years later, after a series of very intense career negotiations, a lot of intense learning, a lot of intense studying, um, my role today is focused on three different things. The first is working with the industry associations like the Cloud Security Alliance on creating new frameworks that address the paradigm shift that has taken place with cloud. The second is working internally with enterprises to find ways when we have things like shadow IT, how do we make data protection business consumable? How do we address these very important issues? And the third one, which is around this area of data privacy. Today we have over 4,000 data privacy regulations worldwide, and we have a cloud or an internet of things which is very global in nature. And so how do we find harmonies or ways to harmonize these regulations to create underlying frameworks so that we don't create a cloud that's based on you know, geographic borders, but rather a global cloud? So that's what I do in a nutshell. Hi, I'm uh, Seema Jatani. I'm the director of product management at a startup called Basho Technologies. Um, the way I got into technology was uh, when I finished high school, uh, I was debating getting into medicine or getting into engineering. And I was going through applications for both. But I just, you know, I thought I like math much more than biology, and I just decided that's that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I did my computer engineering in India and came to the US to do my master's in computer science. Started off my career at IBM and then worked my way to uh, moving into product management from development because I wanted to influence product direction as much as developing and uh, testing products. Um, to work, uh, work from IBM, I worked my way to, uh, to startup companies. This is my second startup company, and I'm loving it. Good for you, good for you. So, so three things I've noticed about the panel that we have today. Number one is that I, I actually, I, I, I hear a lot of passion and, and good observations and point of views about what's happening in the cloud industry. 
So I, I, and I hear your voices and I appreciate you lending your voices and your point of view to that. Number two, a lot of diverse backgrounds here culturally, right, as well as career path. So I think that's important for folks to see. But number three, I think um, I'm gonna go ahead and challenge the panel. So before I do that, I'll, I'll give my background as well. Uh, Roger didn't give me a formal introduction, so I'm, I'm Anne Plissé with Verizon. So I've had a 20 year career in high tech. I'm actually in marketing. It is easy when you have a very good product or service to sell. It's so difficult if it sucks. So, or if you're trying to get into a new market. So spent 12 years working with uh, Uncle John Chambers trying to build a data center business with Cisco. So hello, my alum. Um, and then recently joined Verizon, working on Verizon Cloud. So, um, so here's my question, here's the zinger. And I'm sure that everyone here in the room can, can attest to this. What is the, the dumbest thing you've ever done in your career? the stupidest thing you've ever done. Either, I'll just leave it at that. So actually, let's start on this side. Let's start on this side of the panel first. Okay, you don't have time to think about that Quit one. To, uh, there you go, the stupidest thing. You're like, oh, holy buckets, Batman, why did I do that? I know I, I, know I got 15 of those, but you're up first. Uh, the stupidest thing that I, I can think of is that I cried in my I've so done office. <laughs> office. Like I wasn't happy with uh, with the assessment, and then I got emotional and I cried. Yeah, I mean that's that's just something that's something too that you, you see quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. So, but never let the competitors see you cry. No, 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 not competitors. So, but no, I think we all will have those 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 emotional outbursts as well. I've done that more with my kids. <laughs> so, anything else to add? Um, I think um, that that is what I can think yeah, of I at the moment. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a difficult question, yeah. but no, I would I mean. say probably it's both the stupidest and the best thing I've ever done, which was when I took this bet with my you know boyfriend at the time that I could get an H1 visa, um, you know, coming over here and you know it with someone who is a musician who has no tech skills is telling someone that they're going to get an H1 visa to work in the industry for which they've got no qualifications. And I would say that probably for that next, I didn't know that for the next five years I would be in for the most intense ride of my life because I had so much to learn. Um, but it was sort of, it, it appears it, was, it appeared stupid and very risky at the time, but in hindsight, if I'd not taken that risk and I'd not done it, I wouldn't have gained as much as I did. Well done. Okay, so it's, I guess in uh, hindsight, it was both the stupidest as well as the smartest thing that I uh, did. Um, when uh, I mentioned that, that startup company that I was recruited into, at the time, the CEO convinced me that the product was ready, we had customers, and Everything was ready, uh, ready to go. Um, didn't quite work out that way, but it took another uh, two years. And uh, post that, we were able to go IPO. You stuck so with it. You stuck with I it. I stuck with it. Well done. It was a little bit longer than than uh, I think we all expected. But, I shed some uh, tears on the way. Yes, many tears. Yeah. But uh, it was actually the best experience. I, I think even uh, to this day, after you know four companies later, it, it really all comes back to that original startup that it puts that yeah. bug in you and you just want to keep doing it. I think many it. folks in the audience can probably, you know, share a hand for many folks have like stuck with it, right, that actually believe in something. I, I saw a lot of startups on the earlier panel. Are you guys are still with us? Okay, awesome. All right, thank you. Anne? Um, so I've done a lot of stupid things in my career. Uh, some of them is, is not taking chances. So I have several examples of not taking chances. when. Your examples are stupid things turned out good. Uh, when I was a young consultant, I was very passionate about doing the job right. I wanted to be the best programmer there was on the team. And the gentleman next to me was struggling a little bit with his program, so I went in there and I started helping him out. Really helping him out, um, printing out his code on green bar paper, correcting it with a red pen, redoing it. One day, totally into fixing his work because mom was done and the partner comes around and he says hey Ann I'm going out to lunch I'm buying do you want to go I look at him I said you know I can't I got this deadline I need to get this work done and the guy next to me says yeah I'll go because Ann's sitting there doing his work <laughs> I mean that's yeah. you know year-end reviews come around the partner doesn't know I was sitting there doing this gentleman's work 
He just knows that I didn't go to lunch. So that was, uh, that was probably one of the dumbest mistakes I've made in my career. There you go. Um, when I was younger and I was uh, an engineer, I was um, um, kind of pain in the ass. Um, and I used to be very proud of the fact that I actually fired a few managers. I used to actually keep, uh, keep tally. And it would always work, uh, work the same way. Uh, we would have some sort of a disagreement. Um, and I always knew what the right thing to do was. Um, and um, ended up when it came sort of down to the line, I was able to defend it better. And uh, two of my managers did actually end up being, being fired. And, um, and for a while, I actually kind of wear it as a kind of a badge of honor. Um, and it wasn't until many years later that I actually started a company and, oh my God, became a manager and had a responsibility of organizations and a lot of my uh, brightest engineering stars are paying and the next and other places. Um, and I've learned so much about constructive conflict resolution and, uh, and disruptive ones. Then looking back at my youth, I'm going, oh my God, mm -hmm. was I really dealing with problems that way? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that, those are really good, good experiences that I think that a lot of the folks here can relate with. And, you know, in my experience, actually crying um, was, was a good experience. It was probably the worst. I was very embarrassed about it, but it, it, it made me actually um, kind of dig deep and say, I need a career change. You know, I, I, need, I need to really, you know, do something that, I, that I'm very passionate about. That was my move to Cisco. And boy, <laughs> yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a lot, yeah, just a lot of less sleep deprivation followed that move. Um, but anyway, um, so let's, I'm going to flip gears here because I really like the conversations. I like, I like the experiences these folks are sharing uh, in, in just re regardless of gender and background. What is the smartest thing, the smartest thing you've done in your career? Mine would be actually taking time. With, with gals and females that they're a little bit more junior and in junior positions in marketing organizations that I worked for, especially at Cisco Systems and previous positions in, in the financial services industry. And instead of ignoring them and ignoring their passion, but actually stopping them and saying, hey, listen, you know, why don't you handle this a little bit differently? Why don't you reach out to me? Because you probably won't do it on your own. But I actually took the time and I was very smart about helping these young women. And there's a couple of them right now that are in very, very good positions in Silicon Valley. And they still give me advice, I still give them advice. But giving folks, rather than eye rolling or brushing them off, right, one of the best career experiences I had and the thing I'm, I'm most proud of in my career is actually taking the time. And there's a couple of cases where some of these colleagues were male colleagues as well. I used to say, hey, listen, dude, you're being a bonehead. You're being a fathead. Whatever comments you're making in this meeting, they're not data driven. All right? So you need to stop, you need to reset, right? And you need to figure out how to present yourself. And we all know in our careers, if you're not data driven, whether it's a startup or a very mature company, conversation doesn't make sense, no matter who your audience is. Okay, so, so that's, I'm just gonna share my experience, I'm gonna tee that off and I'm gonna go right back, hopefully I give you enough time to think about it. So if you wanna pass the, the microphone back down this way, I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, and the question stands, okay, what is the smartest thing you think you've done in your career and what type of advice can you impart to the folks here in the room and the folks online? Um, I think I'm gonna talk about two things. Um, one is at work and one is outside of work that, that I think is beneficial. But um, at work is, um, you know, based on a comment that she said, constructive um, feedback is that being a product manager, you don't actually manage the people, but you have to influence a whole bunch of teams, like development, sales, marketing, a whole bunch of teams. and. There are so many things that can go wrong, and it's easy to get angry at people when they don't do things that you expect them to do. And so I started off getting angry, but then quickly realized that it's not gonna give me the results that I really want, which is for them to say, okay, let's work together, let's work as a team, let's do blameless postmortems and figure out how to get better. So actually adopting that, using that theory of using blameless postmortems and working towards a path of improvement has helped me um, in a variety of different situations. Um, the second thing that I think has been really beneficial is that um, 
participating in a local um, uh, events that help kids learn about technology. So I participated in uh, a conference for kids actually called Hack Kids uh, earlier this year. Um, it was a gay conference organized by a gentleman who's, uh, who is a VP at Juniper, um, Chris Hoff, if anybody knows him. But oh, Beaker. Yeah, Baker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so, um, so you know, uh, coming from a computer science background, I volunteered to teach a Python class. But there were so many other sessions where people were teaching kids about security, um, hacking, uh, picking locks, you know, programming, uh, robotics. It was so amazing to see all these kids interested in technology at you know at a at a young age that I want to be a part of that even more so that we can help the next generation uh, be excited about and wanting to be a part of the technology industry. That is an industry. incredibly important point. Computer science is a science. For science, it's imagination, and imagination comes from kids. So that's that's actually that, that's that's awesome. Thanks. All right, next. So I think two things. The first is, I don't know if anyone's heard of the program Strength Finders, but one of the things that it has enabled me, instead of focusing more on my weaknesses or areas that needed improvement, was to harness some of my natural strengths, to know what they are, and to be focused on that. And as part of it, not going the journey alone. Like, one of the things I'm really lucky to leverage, and Seema and I both met through this, is an organization called Cloud Now, which is a a non-profit organization dedicated to advancing women in cloud and technology careers. And being able to have role models and mentors through that has assisted me enormously. The other thing that I have started to do, which I think is also s probably one of the smartest things that I've done, is usually I tend to sort of get myself, I guess, so busy, or almost in a frenetic pace. And what I've done is now every Friday, I block out three hours of my schedule. And it's time where I don't allow myself to have any meetings. You know, it's time where I may not be at my desk, but it's time where I just do thinking time. And I just found that has helped me so much, you know, approach problems or think of new ideas, just having that quiet time every week. You're napping at your desk. Don't lie to us. <laughs> I'm stuck. It's actually interesting listening to the, to the two of you because I think um, you'll probably see a similar pattern, I think, for all the, the panelists. Um, time management. Uh, it's really, really critical that you set aside the block out the Outlook calendar because it gets filled really quickly. And uh, it's like you said, there, there is no time to, to just think about uh, you know, new projects or things that you've set aside that you'll eventually get to but never get to. Um, the other uh, lesson that I, I guess I, I've learned over the years is to deal with issues immediately. Um, and that's actually something that I, I think I've uh, taught others in my own company uh, to not procrastinate and uh, sweep it under the rug or, or no pretend that the... Aggressive. No it passive aggressive. No passive aggressive. It does not work. Um, no. It doesn't work. You just have to deal with it mm -hmm. uh, immediately. Um, on a personal note, um, I actually like the story the, uh, about just uh, the, the kids. Um, I actually started a not-for-profit foundation for uh, bringing mathematics and uh, technology, robotics, to a school in the Boston area. And we uh, partnered up with MIT uh, through a national robotics competition. And actually, our, our kids came in. Uh, second place uh, two year, the first year, which was fantastic. So that was uh, very rewarding uh, on a personal note. Uh, and I think it's really important just uh, particularly being women uh, in technology to uh, bring that love of uh, math and, and, and technology to uh, kids, not just girls, but uh, you know, boys as well. And at a young age, they're, they're like sponges. I mean, it, it's incredible to just to see the impact if you if you bring that that passion and uh, that um, experience at that at a very young age. Thank you. I think the the best thing I've done is ask for help, and that was hard to do. It took me a long time because I thought I could code my way through any problem or solve any puzzle on my own. So learning to pick my head up and ask for help, and then getting engaged with a mentor. It's really opened my eyes um, to ways that I can help other people. 
So once I asked for help, the help I got was I needed to start speaking and getting engaged in the bigger community and broadening my perspective of the problems and challenges I'm facing. And it's really transformed not just my career, but my outlook, my perspective, my happiness, my engagement. So asking for help is hard, but it, it's made a big difference in my life. Well, I think the smartest things that I've, uh, that I've done over, over the years is actually be adventurous and um, allow things to happen and allow myself to be excited about, about things that were not planned and not anticipated and take chances and take opportunities and, and make the most of them. And if I look at things which uh, were uh, the, the biggest blessings is, uh, uh, for example, getting, uh, I don't know, getting married at 18, having a first kid at 19. Um, and a lot of it actually wasn't planned, but as it was happening, it, uh, it, it felt like the best thing to, to, to have happened, and, and it was. And it turns out that uh, not according to any kind of a master plan, but by the time I was 30, I had three kids. And if I wouldn't have had them, then I probably wouldn't have no way of uh, having, having family and having, um, having kids and then having entrepreneurial career at the time. It felt like um, I couldn't in my 20s pursue the kind of investment in career uh, that maybe I would have wanted otherwise. But it turns out by the time 30s came along, uh, kids were already not that little, and uh, and and I could um, still have still have both. It wasn't smart by calculations. It was uh, more of uh, being open to opportunities and just embracing and veteranness of life. Yeah, that that was a very honest answer. Um, so, and I'm I'm actually inspired by the modesty and this is the life experience the panel has been courageous enough to share with us because I'm sure we can we can associate with all of that. And believe me, you know, if, if I, ha I have four kids all under the age of 10, you know, and, it, and I've, I've been sitting in, in conference rooms with the senior VP of sales and the SVP of engineering, and I'm like, you guys got nothing on my 10-year-old. <laughs> Seriously, he's not going to have product in time. <laughs> he's not going to have the pipeline you want. Okay, <laughs> come on. Anyway, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, and my kids have trained me very much for that conversation. So, so let's do this. I am going to, we have about three minutes left, um, and I, I really hope that you take the time to walk up to, at, at, at the end of the session, walk up to these folks, and I hope they've inspired you to learn more about their backgrounds and how they can help you. Because I'm very impressed, and, and, and very impressed with, with, with the, the talent I have on stage. Your last question here, you guys have about a, a minute each to answer this, given the little clock thing that, that, that Roger said we have here. Um, is it's five years from now? Where's your career? Look at you, Anne. It's like, <laughs> what's the question? It's five years from now. Where are you in your career? I we love should all be asking ourselves this. I love building companies. There you go. Since I've uh, I've started my first career high tech company uh, eight years ago, it was like I was all of a sudden finding that I was walking in my skin. Um, and I'm on my cycle company and uh, I hope that next five years will be kind to us and five years from now I'll be starting next one. Any VCs in the room? Okay. Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm, open to, I'm open to what's gonna happen. I've got a couple different things. Uh, I love working at DirecTV. I love driving. Um, I want to build a quality community in Southern California, Equality Directors Forum. And off of that, I really want to get my side work going in, which is coaching young women as they're getting out in their careers. So they say yes to lunch, yes to networking, yes to chances, and ask for help when they need it. I'm pretty sure I'm still going to be in high tech. Uh, this will be the third time that I've said this was the last one, uh, and I'm still at it. Um, I'm actually excited about the uh, the upcoming journey with Ericsson. Um, it's you know going from effectively a startup back into a large company, but uh, they are committed to transformation, and that's exciting. So, at least for the next few years, that's where I, where I will be. I think I'll be living in Europe and I'll be working to build a cloud bill of rights. It's something that's very near and dear to me and I want to see like vulnerable, you know, elderly people, young children, you know, to be protected, have the same sort of protection that they do afforded in the physical world, in the digital world. Sorry. Um, I hope 
to start my own company. It's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I come from a family background of entrepreneurs, but I haven't done it so far, so I hope to do it. I hope to take the chance. Thank you. That's very inspiring. Very, very inspiring. So I, I want to thank you all um, for your contribution. So in, in five years, I really hope to have every one of my four children <laughs> heading towards college. <laughs> I'll just tell you that much. So they're on the right path now. So that, that's my focus um, and, and my balance where I'm at in my career right now. So um, I just want to make sure that, that we give a round of applause to the panel and for all of your observations and points of view. So thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. So we have about a half a minute left. Look at that. We're just, we're on time. We got it going. So I know that the exhibit hall is open. I think there's hors d'oeuvres and there's cocktails. But once again, I do invite you all to reach out to the talent on this panel. Again, I'm very impressed and I do appreciate your time, ladies. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>